There we go. Hey, no. Now we're in business. Wow. <laughs> we got the fancy shit. This is literally like the YouTube video at this point. Yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> so I was going to ask you if, well, I was going to say I kind of already recorded like a minute ago. Like just okay, letting, yeah, yeah. Just letting you know right now. Um, I was gonna ask if you wanted to do like I know you wanted like your music and like the videos to be separate. So do you want it to be just one lump sum video, or do you want me to separate it into like your Kai then just Vaughn? No, no, it can all be in one. That's fine. Okay, I'm just I was just gonna ask just before like we get started. Yeah, um, I appreciate it. Yeah, I was just, I was just curious because like the video that you like you talked about earlier when you talk i think it was a promotional video how you just wanted to separate it especially since you wanted it to be anonymous yeah yeah i think i don't have a problem with you know people knowing about either one at this point so if there's cross promo so be it you know <laughs> yeah it's definitely i was gonna ask and like i tried getting everything that i possibly could especially when it came to i tried doing the same thing with when it came to chris when he actually did his interview so i just wanted to do a few bullet points and everything like that just ask a few questions um, yeah, totally. We already, talk, we already talked about how you transition from basic music to creating a YouTube channel, and even though you said you said, and I think the video that you just dropped, basically, like you didn't expect anything out of. I, I would say you didn't expect anything out of it, even though it kind of blew up. What was your right, initial? Yeah. What was your initial thought like after it gained a million views that you probably didn't share in the video? Because I know maybe like a 15 to 20 second snippet that anybody saw in the video. It's sort of like people get wrapped around when it comes to like views and everything like no matter how many numbers you get or like how many people actually get to watch you yeah yeah no it was it was kind of crazy i definitely didn't expect it to have that big of an appeal i guess i just like didn't expect it to um get picked up in the algorithm not like that at least um because i thought i always thought that like even with all like the drift funk shit on tiktok i still thought it was pretty niche like i didn't realize that a video like that could even have that broad of an appeal really so i think it kind of opened my eyes to that for sure it it definitely made uh the whole drift funk movement like all the shit going on on tiktok it made it feel like oh wow that's like that's a huge huge um you know push for the genre right now is that you know drift funk use in uh like sigma edits and <laughs> like motivational videos i guess um so yeah that's something i didn't really expand on in the video very much but yeah it definitely made me realize just the sheer size of the scene at this point yeah because just from i would say like the yet the last year or two i've seen like two or three other people just try to make videos in general whether it came to like tutorials i would say i would say the reason i got started i wouldn't say producing because i don't produce as much as i make videos but i remember like zap beats especially like when he used to drop different tutorials about different i would say different styles of funk or different types of styles of music in general and then just seeing other people just come out with kits come out with drum kits and just review everything a wide open eye in a sense basically knowing that there are a lot of other people especially since this is how people describe it as an internet genre and just seeing that there's so many people that actually support it and no matter like what subgenre that people want to describe it each and every single day yeah no i think the the people in the scene who i've seen like doing content creation in addition to their music like i think it helps everyone out because I think it really shows people that like, yo, there are other people investing in this, like you should too, basically. And so I think it definitely helps expand the scene. And it's just also motivating for other people to start doing the same thing. Like, I think that when you see someone else like consistently putting out content in addition, like outside of just like the music, it, it encourages you to want to do the same thing, you know, give your your knowledge to the world, I guess. Or I guess just like your perspective on things, like even like commentary channels and stuff. I, I, I want to see more of that type of shit. Like, I feel like there's definitely a huge opportunity there for other creators to step in. Cause like I said, this scene is bigger than even i realized at first so yeah i think it's i think it's great to see so many other people doing that type of stuff yeah i was gonna say going back to the commentary thing i think it was also it was actually pretty cool especially when you and back when and just brian were basically just put together the entire live set especially on his channel i think that was like something that i didn't even expect for people to do because i mean you had the back to back step back when it's already doing but you never anticipated or even thought to collab with somebody that has 
such a either such a huge following or somebody that follows the genre but really doesn't know that many people we might not think know that many people it was kind of surreal just knowing that there's so much or i would say there's many different forms of content that you can actually create and i didn't even know that djing was an actual thing if i'm being honest like january like when the actual funk around show happened i was actually completely shocked that people were actually djing in the actual genre like I didn't even know that was an actual thing until I actually decided to actually make the leap to actually go to Denver. Yeah, before before all that Denver shit, it was really like few and far between in terms of like shows where people were DJing that type of music. It was just like little house parties here and there basically. And there was like, from what I understand, there's like a decent kind of live scene for that type of music in Germany, maybe a little bit. Yeah, um, there, I, I don't there know. actually is. Um, I just don't, <laughs> I would say his name, but a little problem is basically like the person that connects to me, like to Europe mainly in him and I think his brother Rob and anybody that's part of like Birda Posse, basically they put on so many shows that I, I theoretically lose track the amount of shows that they're doing because they get flyers, like every single like couple weeks or so and then next thing you know there's another show that's happening in like a couple weeks like you definitely lose track it's just so much and it's just a great thing for people especially if they're new to the genre because even seeing people join different types of discords especially like the 808 discord like people are always interested in just what either what the genre is or just getting into different facets of music in general yeah 100 100 percent. yeah it's cool to see the scene grow so much since the live stuff started popping off i feel like that also kind uh, I mean, I feel like you really kicked up a notch with the content creation this year, right? Like since since the funk around show pretty much yeah so my initial i would say start was probably like the funk monthly stuff i would say i got the idea from funk daily or like i think it was sad soundcloud because i think he was besides you him maybe smooth sounds and the other few promotional channels that i'm missing out on off the top of my head but there is i don't know it was sort of like basically commentary along with people that are dropping during a certain portion of time and just lumping that together that was basically my first initial idea because there are so many people that I personally talk to not just from the videos in general because I was actually shocked that there are so many people that actually watch my videos like Ryan looks at my videos like Freddie Confetti looks at my videos like people from different collectives that I don't even know about watch my videos and it completely shocked me especially like when they DM me and like I'm just a small YouTuber or I don't even have that much of a following and just seeing people reach out is just sort of mind-blowing um at yeah the end of it's the day. cool yeah it's really cool I think that um I don't know SoundCloud like I obviously Obviously, SoundCloud is great for, you know, artists connecting with fans, but I think even more so than that, uh, mediums where you get to interact with, um, like, I don't know, like people doing commentary stuff. Like, I feel like that adds a whole other dimension of personality to the conversation because it's like either like hearing somebody's voice or seeing their face, like putting a face to the name, like it goes a long way in creating those. Um, I don't know. It adds legitimacy to the scene. I feel like, um, you know, seeing people willing to, you know, put their name on something and put it out there. Yeah. It, yeah. I, honestly, I didn't even expect anything out of it. Like I was just literally the only thing that I talk about from like the time I found the genre to maybe college or basically when I graduated, I think the end of last year I graduated from college. Like the only thing that I talked about was school work and funk that's about it so i was like i can't talk about my work because it's literally in the kitchen all day the only thing that i talk about is music or i just want to get to know more about the actual genre in general so that was basically my first thought because there's so many different youtubers or different videos that say if you want to create content the best thing to do is to find something that you're interested in and just start making videos out of something yeah totally yeah like i said like i, I didn't initially think that it was going to get like any of my videos were going to get any type of views especially like i think it's about 10 or 11 months just starting to do like fun content or just any type of content in general i know like it's gonna be a long it's gonna be a long way but i'm just hoping that there are a lot more people to actually not just do content in this community but also like the music community in general yeah yeah 100 percent. i think it's really cool what uh weaver beats has done too because like he was pretty actively involved in the in the funk scene for a while and he's like got a pretty like huge youtube audience now like he's killing it he's like really tapped into like the production side of youtube so i think it's cool to see what he's done i was gonna ask like what got you into switching from i would say funk oriented content to a more i would say i, I guess i would answer my own question but i'm guessing the transition to basically investigating different types of stories and music in general i'm guessing the reason might be a broader audience because like we said earlier the genre is very niche yeah yeah, it's it's yeah I, I definitely want to try and um you know 
cover other topics just so I don't, I don't want to be speaking to a, like a really tiny bubble, I guess. And I don't want to be so like, I don't want to be pigeonholed into just doing content about that necessarily, just because I don't know if right now, at least there's enough going on to really like make a, you know, decently, uh, you know, content heavy video about every two weeks. Cause like, I'm trying to upload videos every two weeks. And so, you know, every once in a while there's stuff that, you know, like, like the follow-up video that I just did, like obviously that's a video that, you know, needed to be made, I think, just as like a follow-up. But yeah, I don't know if there's enough going on in the scene right now for me to, yeah, really invest a lot of videos into it. Yeah, if I'm thinking off the top of my head, there's really not much that's happening, especially like when it comes to drops. Usually to me, I feel like drops either happen at the beginning of the year or basically around like the holiday season. So just like that sort of four to six months gap, there's literally no body dropping that's i would say a major piece in general i can't think of anything that happened within like the last year or two i'm probably just speaking out the top of my head right now but i'm, I'm just kind of my bad i'm just kind of blinking right now um oh, you're good yeah i'm just i'm just a little nervous okay <laughs> no worries bro <laughs> oh man i think 2022 was definitely a funny a funny year and <laughs> i do i do want to say one thing is <laughs> And I'm, prob I'm probably going to make a ton of people laugh when I talk when I talk about this in this video, but P honk. I just want to talk. Honk, I just yeah. want to I just want to talk about it just a little bit. Huge moment. <laughs> so i know there's a lot of people that like it there's a lot of people that hate it i personally have seen a lot of people really 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 hate it and like even though there's a there's like the meme fist account and there's a lot of people that make memes about every single producer in general um what's your basic stance on the p-honk genre it's my in general? stance on p-honk <laughs> bro you're putting me put me on the spot like that <laughs> No, I, I, I don't. I don't know. Like that's like the one thing that I feel like the group, the group chats about, just like the memes in general are just talking about, are talking about because of the parody video that you were that you added in the video. Yeah, yeah. No, P Honk is funny. Yeah, I. You know what? I I want to make sure that this is known publicly, but I I've seen people saying talking about P Honk for years. Like going back to like 2017, I'm talking about. So I think P Honk has always been around, if we're being real. But uh, no, I respect, <laughs> I respect it. I feel like any any community that's alive and well needs a needs a P Honk. I was gonna say the Spotify basically has been about a year and a half since you actually dropped the video. So what yep. what have you basically learned? since actually dropping that video because i know you ever since that you dropped different types of videos you had the doja cat video the freddie dread video the pro the promotional video and probably a ton of other videos that i'm probably missing out what basically two questions what can you say that you learned within the last year and a half especially when it comes to making different forms of content in general or what it, well basically my second question is what do you think you would tell yourself if you could basically either go back or tell somebody that is sort of hesitating on creating their first video basically i definitely would have told myself to stop obsessing over the editing so much because that's the the freddy dread video is still like i'm i'm so proud of that video but it took me so so long to make because i j i just went ham on the editing like everything is like so edited and uh, you know it's it's nice there's you know there's a place for that content i just think right now i'm really trying to focus on consistency and sometimes spending you know like days and days on like 10 seconds of graphics Jeez. just doesn't work when you're trying to put out you know a video every two weeks um so yeah i because like with music that was something i figured out pretty fast is like if you just keep putting out shit and like you're consistent you know you can build consistent you know a consistently growing audience and so i'm trying to be more consistent on youtube now that's like been something i'm working on this year especially pretty much since like the uh since the ghostwriter video basically i've been trying to be more consistent with uploads and so yeah it's been a it's been a learning experience but i i definitely would say now i i wouldn't say cut corners but I just don't obsess over the editing quite as much as I used to. Definitely. I would say, actually, how long have you been editing? And I would say, how long did you have the idea of basically creating a YouTube channel? Because I know there's a ton of people that say, oh, I wanted to create a YouTube channel like some odd years ago, but I didn't want to upload anything because basically life got in the way. Yeah, yeah. So I've, I've been on YouTube since I was like 11 years old. I think I made an account in like 2007 and I used to just upload like, I was really into animation at the time. And so like 
when I first started making videos, I think it was just Microsoft Paint and Windows Movie Maker animations. Like, and yeah. basically that put me on a trajectory to thinking I wanted to like be a filmmaker for the rest of my life and like make movies and shit. And so when I went to college, I thought that's what I was going to do for the rest of my life. Um, but then in college, I kind of discovered funk music and started producing. Well, started producing more consistently, I guess, because... I just done like, like occasionally I would upload like electronic shit or something, but that really got me into producing uh, that type of music. And I really decided I wanted to try and do like music um, for the rest of my life, at least, you know, as a hobby. And I kind of fell out of love with uh, filmmaking, at least like that path, you know, like working in the actual industry or whatever. But I would say probably when I started uploading videos pretty much to the channel, in like 2019 when i was just doing um it was just a music promotion channel i really like wanted to build a youtube presence again because i just i had been out of school for a month i think i had just graduated college and so i was having trouble finding a job at the time and i was like well shit, i might as well use my time to use these skills that i just spent <laughs> you know so many years building up and so that was the start of it. And then like when that Spotify video and the Freddie Dread video popped off, I was like, okay, maybe it's time to stop uploading to this channel every few months and like actually like take it seriously. Cause it's something I've always been interested in, but now I feel like I actually have a decent shot at being able to do it for a long time. So we'll see. Yeah, definitely. Yeah. That's actually, that's actually a lo that's actually a loaded question. If I'm being honest, cause there's a lot of, there's a lot of people that want to not, not even when it comes to like content creation in general, but there's a lot of people that want to turn their hobby into basically a full-time living it's sort of like a weird dynamic especially like especially when it turns from a hobby to something that's your full-time job i would say that's definitely a, that's definitely a huge sacrifice especially when it comes to music and content creation i think I, personally i feel like music has it like the most difficult especially like if you have to put out consistent work you have to get cover art you have to get everything checked yeah. under a certain box and you have to have release dates and everything and there's just so many different hiccups that you have to deal with music versus consecration, which has its own, it, it has its own slopes in general. It's, yeah. I would say it's different, different battles, especially if you're trying to do it or basically try to be your own boss at some point. The tricky part is, yeah, most of the time you just have to be consistent and practice and practice and practice. And eventually, you know, after you've practiced and, you know, made enough of whatever you're making, you'll get really good at it and, you know, people will enjoy it and consume it or whatever what i think a lot of people don't realize when they you know get dead set on doing their hobby for a living is like in almost all cases it requires some amount of luck or like you know having a connection or whatever and so sometimes grinding isn't enough you just have to do it enough until you get lucky hopefully and so i definitely think that i got extraordinarily lucky with the spotify video like obviously i tried hard on it but i don't think that you know it deserves necessarily, um, you know, that many views. It might have just been like lucky timing or whatever. But um, regardless, I just want to be more consistent on YouTube because then I think that not only am I practicing, but I'm putting myself in a position where I have a higher likelihood of that luck, you know, turning it into a career someday. So the almighty YouTube algorithm. Exactly. <laughs> yep. It's a. It's a. I, I heard someone say one time that trying to please the algorithm on YouTube is like making videos for a robot that doesn't love you. <laughs> I've never heard that now. I've actually never heard that analogy before. It's it's definitely like that. <laughs> That's something that I uh, kind of realized with the last video too, because like I definitely have kind of tried to find a balance between making videos that are within the niche niches that really interest me and making videos that have a more broad appeal. And so... Sometimes it does suck when you like take things into consideration. And you're like, oh, the algorithm would really like if I did it like this or like this. It just it when it falls flat on its face, it's like, ah, oh, damn, the robot's really not loving me today. It's like I give you all this love and affection. You just <laughs> give me like this, a rock. That's it. Yeah. Yep. yep <laughs> that's about exactly. it, man. That's like that's actually really interesting because there's so many people that I know that to this day still still grind the consistent amount of content that they have like there's so many different people outside of music like gaming that do the same thing either to please their audience or to i would say get the same consistent numbers there's so yeah. there's so many different facets about the algorithm that if they don't follow it a certain way that it's not gonna basically reap the rewards that they want at the end of the day yep 
Yep, exactly. And I, I see a lot of people, like, especially with the Instagram algorithm, like, talking about being, uh, what do they say, like, shadow banned? Oh, man. Talking about being shadow banned. I'm shadow banned. Please share. I can't, I can't you know? remember last time I heard that word. It was probably, like, three years ago when a ton of people were getting banned off of Twitter. Yeah, there's people who sell services to get people unshadow banned, which I feel like is probably just a scam. <laughs> <laughs> I, I, just going back to the channel the shadow ban word it's been so many years since i've actually heard that word like i just thought it was something that either happened on twitter or if there was some type of content that you weren't doing correctly to feed the algorithm in general that's just my preconsumption yeah i, I definitely still see people uh, throw that phrase around on instagram especially yeah definitely man transitioning from the content aspect to the music aspect and we can go back we can go to the content aspect and in, in general like if you want to or if the no no what no, if it comes in wanna... or like if it comes in conversation so i know that there's probably a couple of teasers on holy mob in general i've seen on i've probably seen on twitter even though i try not i try to stay off that app um <laughs> yeah but i don't blame you <laughs> like it's just so it's just so weird just going on twitter and just seeing your feed just seeing the feed versus like maybe a few years back it's just now i just yeah. want to stay off it 24 7 at this point yeah it's it's a little rough now it's a little rough so i basically did two i would say two things i basically calculated how long it has been since you guys released volume one and volume 10 and oh, wow. also basically I'm, I'm gonna ask the question after this but it has been since according to soundcloud since volume one and according to spotify on volume 10 approximately it's been 1644 days which equates to nearly four and a half years since the first volume was released and since the most recent volume was released and my question is i assume that you've basically been here since volume one to volume 10 right basically yeah like under vonathan yep. <laughs> if anybody yep, remembers yep. Um, that's right my, my question is even though the members have changed and the styles have changed of everybody because obviously you talked about that and the how holy mob has changed funk video in general what has changed basically from the beginning of starting holy mob to basically right now i'm guessing you guys are probably going to release volume 11 at this point because there's so many different rumors about um volume 11 getting released even if, whether that's the name or not yeah that's my question like what has changed minus like obviously the roster changing in general over a long period of time and just the style the styles of every single producer that's in the actual group what have you guys learned both individually about each each other and also as a group as a whole yeah um i don't know it's 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 crazy you know we've there have been some roster changes but i would say most of us in the group still have been there since volume one and so for a lot of you know with with all of us who have been there that long we've been friends for pretty much like uh, geez like over six years now i guess that would be right yeah 2017 we dropped the first tape so over six years now and so like we're all still like really you know we're homies like we keep in touch we you know the group chat is still active and so it's really and i tr I, I think i tried to get this point across in the holy mob video but like it really is more than a collective for us and that's what i think has made it works work so well is like we like genuinely really all we all really fuck with each other and so you know when you have that bond with somebody for as long as we have it's just it's so cool to be able to connect and connect over music and like collab and uh see how all of these different styles mesh because like you said a lot of us our styles have changed over the years and so they've kind of evolved into their own different directions but getting to you know collab with them on these tapes gives us a chance to you know really have a melting pot of different sounds and push the genre to different places where it might have not gone before okay and next question is what was the actual i feel like i feel like everybody everybody has a generic collective name but what is basically the origin story or origin story of the actual name if you actually remember yeah so the name had already been come up with before i actually joined so uh sometime in like fall of 2016 i dropped my like first funk tape and one of the guys i had collabed with on it lil bross he uh, asked me to join this collective he was starting uh, called Holy Mob. And so uh, I joined it. It was like mostly these uh, Brazilian funk producers, uh, not to be confused with Brazilian funk as is <laughs> now known. 
the like I don't I don't know what it what distinguishes it from drift funk, but it's it's so like, it's so weird. Um, just everybody comparing it, not to get off topic, but it's just I would say the different styles of over around the world in general. I'm guessing that's the major difference that I can hear because you can definitely hear different genres, especially when it comes to reggae music or when it comes to like like Hispanic origins or Hispanic heritage in some of the songs because you definitely hear that sort of drum pattern along with like house music and even drum and bass in general like it's not just i would say hip-hop drums it's sort of basically expanded into other countries based off of so we're ba oh based off their culture so that's probably like my only thought to like why they actually have different subgenres of the subgenre that we're yeah, yeah. thinking about right now yeah totally i guess i i just haven't been super in touch with the uh the spotify's editorial funk playlist so i uh I'm not super in touch with what the trendy sound is now but um but yeah it was polymob was started by um a bunch of brazilian producers and uh at some point the founder of the group dipped because he got in a fight with somebody else about house music i think <laughs> and so uh we were we recruited a bunch of other people to join a lot of whom i think are still yeah all of them are pretty much still in the group so uh yeah and then you know there have been a couple that have come and go and but for the most part it's just been the same crew of people since early 2017 late 2016 so it's been it's been super cool to grow with them as artists and yeah i'll leave it at that yeah <laughs> Um, I don't want to say I don't want to say too much. There may or may not be something. There might be a little bit of a little bit of. There might be something happening in the near future. Oh, oh, definitely. <laughs> I'm, I'm, I'm definitely i'm definitely excited to see what you guys actually have in the future too because obviously i listen to you guys like i'm gonna I'm a say this before anything i'm a fan before i'm a producer and a content creator and even when i talk to people that i meet in real life that are actually in the community when it comes to like pygmalion little rocket man chris in general especially the baltimore show i'm definitely a fan before i'm a producer and i'm definitely a fan before i'm a content creator because i've listened to i've listened to every single collective that you made a video about i support murder posse i support everybody in the community if i'm if i'm being honest i'm still a, a fucking fanboy of holy mob in general because i listen <laughs> i listen to every single tape almost every single day religiously um that's tight and i and, I, I appreciate it yeah like i'm just here i'm honestly just here to support everybody that's also like going back to content creation like I'm really, pa I'm like really super passionate about the overall genre in general, especially not just the genre, but just the people that I've listened to, especially during COVID, like off the top of my head, um, this is going to be like a question later down the line. My favorite producers, obviously Barry Main, Roland Jones, obviously, because everybody loves his style in general, especially when it comes to the boom bap uh, type drums that he uses. Oh yeah, yeah, totally. But I would say one person that I feel like is extremely underrated is Tony and Eric D. Oh um, yeah, for sure. Because I listen to Digital Healing Volume 1 through 3 like clockwork. Like, yeah. I'm not even joking. Like if like Tony is probably like I don't I don't even know how to explain like how the hell he produces so well. Um, no, you're right. And Tony's so, Tony's a G. It's so fucking smooth. Like I'm just addicted to like just listening to every single one of his albums in general. Just hearing somebody that has that similar t that similar style like Eric. It was just like okay, so now I can actually have a break from his discography and just go to somebody else. Yeah, yeah, totally. Yeah, Tony Tony's a G. He uh he actually did the Russian captions for the Spotify video. So shout out to shout out to Tony for the Russian <laughs> captions. Yeah, shout out to him. He's a he's a real homie. Even though like I know there's a lot of people that don't answer DMs in general. Like I, I don't even DM that many people, but he was probably the first person that I bought something off of Bandcamp. Like oh yeah, yeah. how many yeah. I don't even know how many years ago. Like I bought his drum kit. That was like the first drum kit I ever used. And then from that I just went to a huge ass rabbit hole of different producers. Yeah, Tony's music is sick. It, like you said, it's so smooth and uh it's like unlike a lot of other things that I've heard in the genre before. I think he gives he has like a like a really cool like R&B twist on things. I feel like like his shit has groove and it's it's sick. And same thing with Eric D, like I feel like like him and um Jacoby is another one that comes to mind like they've got that sound like on lock. Yeah. Like that Ramirez type beat. <laughs> 
Yeah, his description so is like maker of Ramirez type beats, I think, on on either SoundCloud or Spotify. And it's probably the funniest thing ever. Yeah, yeah, dude. He, uh, he needs to... I don't know if he's made a track with Ramirez. Part of me feels like they've worked with each other before because I know they like may or may not have tweeted at each other before or something. I can't remember, but they need to like do an album or something. <laughs> Honestly, I, if that ever happens in my lifespan or if he ever produced for Ramirez, I feel like that would be... I can already tell that that would probably definitely be a life goal for him because he uses a lot of inspiration, especially with his with Ramirez's style. You can definitely you can definitely hear it, especially when you go from like his discography to people that are part of. I think it's not three. It's not three six mafia. It's a. Uh, I know Baker was in the collect. Was in the oh, it's Devilish Trio. Devilish yeah. Trio, like yeah, just ha just having that those type of styles, those type of underground styles yeah yeah totally okay so next question and i was gonna say your f current favorite producer um I'm, I'm trying to think of like the three the three the three follow questions so okay favorite track you've made favorite track that's not yours favorite okay. artist currently and favorite artist of all time like outside of the genre oh shit and i might i might right. I, I might ask you another follow-up question let's take it one by one okay so favorite track i've made yeah this can either this can either be a solo track or something that is off a tape or a collab. It could literally be anything. I I don't know. I'm one of those people who like I I feel like I'm most proud of whatever I've worked on the most recently. And so there's this collab I just did with uh, Caspian Rose, and we got Elijah Ghost on it to do vocals, and wow. it's like one of my favorite tracks I've ever worked on. And I think that will be coming out soon. So. Uh, Ooh. NRT. Yeah, I'm excited. NRT. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, I'm super excited for that to come out. What was the next question? Favorite track artist? that's track that's not oh, track yours. That's not mine. Let's see. At the moment. Yeah, at, I think it's it, it two changes parts. a lot. It's two parts, like at the moment and of all time, I guess. I think all time is probably gonna be more difficult. <laughs> yeah, my favorite song at the moment is the third track off of Escape and Backwind's new tape that came out a couple weeks ago. It's called Back to the Back. Yeah, I'm so I, I heard there. him playing it during his set on the tour and i was like that shit needs to come out like now <laughs> man there's like two people that i know that are workhorses in the community right now and that's back when and rocket man i don't know how yep, the hell they make right. so much fucking music in general i know like quote unquote cooking with, with him when i was going to the denver show i was just shocked at the amount of tracks that he had unreleased just a, oh just, shit for real he's just got a vault he probably has a vault that i don't even know about or like just like the amount of collabs that he does on a consist on a consistent basis like this man is just a workhorse like if anybody if anybody says says that he's not a workhorse you're a damn you're a fucking liar exactly yeah he is uh he is prolific that is for sure all right i think i have an answer for favorite song of all time um this song is actually not that old but i think i've listened to it enough times to say that it's at least got to be in my top five of all time. And this is just the first one that came to mind. So, um, but it's a Sudier song called Uppers and Downers. Can I so guess nice. like, can I guess which Pirelli is on? Is it? I don't know if it's come out on a Pirelli tape yet. Let me see. I know, I know the song that you're talking. I think it's a it solo. Out... Is it most recent? Like one of his recent it, drops? Yeah, it came out in, it came out like a little over a year ago. Okay, so I'm, I'm guessing it might just be like a solo drop where he might have it coming out probably like whenever he drops his next album. Yep, I would imagine it'll be on the next one. I don't know. The last time he dropped one was in 2021. Jeez. He should drop another one. Yeah, especially. He's been doing a lot of tapes. A lot of tapes are rappers specifically. Yeah. Dude, I really fucked with his uh, tape with Wi-Fi God. Actually, I guess they did too. Yeah. I, I liked both of them. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I forgot they did too. Yeah, I, I specifically like... I think it's 456 on the second one that he did with them. Like that's my fit. That's my favorite out of both tapes that they actually did. Oh yeah, this one's tight. So yeah, that's that's the favorite song of all time. It's the uh, uppers and downers. That's a that's a bet. That's definitely a valid too. Because Sudio is a goat. If I'm being honest, he is. Um, he was definitely like. I mean, I still. Um, his music was definitely a huge inspiration on my uh, earlier work and i still to some extent as other influences mixed in there as well yes yeah, it's, it's definitely a great just hearing inspiration from a lot of people i'd see 
the people that I listen to the most consistently now specifically would have to be people that get inspiration from Roland Jones. I hope I don't like break anyone's hearts when I say this, but it's I would say like even though even though it sounds like they're copying, you could definitely hear the inspiration from him. Like especially like Roland Jones, Barry Main. Um, those are like the first two that I can think of off the top of my head, especially when there's just a broader amount of producers that you're just talking about in general like you definitely hear the inspiration especially when you go from their discography to another producer's discography that probably doesn't have the same amount of listeners right yep okay yep so next thing is gonna be i did another calculation <laughs> oh boy let's hear it <laughs> is for the 50 songs in the new playlist the funk origins playlist that we love so dearly and it doesn't have cowbells it's op <laughs> right it's optional no cowbell required it's optional <laughs> There were three songs from the from Holy Mob. All three were from Intius. It was Break Out the Glock, Android 18 with Golly, and Yo mm -hmm. Bitch a Fiend with Caspian mm -hmm. Rose and Intius, and five solos or singles from other members. So in total, Holy Mob or any Holy Mob members or anybody that's part of Collective take over eight out of the 50 songs of the playlist. So what are your thoughts on that? That's based <laughs> as fuck, man what's that like 16 percent? i'll take that i'll take that all day that's yeah. tight yeah because uh, it's, it's, it was just amazing when i was like i'm gonna just filter this real quick before i actually like get on the call just to see like how this playlist actually sounds because i i definitely had all these songs added because i follow basically all of you at this point and i was just shocked and i was like damn and then i didn't want to be selfish to be like that's it <laughs> no yeah it's it's uh I'll be interested to see how they curate it after this because in the video that I just dropped I talk I talk about how a lot of the tracks in that playlist were just ported over from the algorithm playlist or the the playlist that is curated by the algorithm and so I'm interested to see which artist the human editor who I hope is curating this playlist who they kind of gravitate towards when they start curating the playlist manually like when i saw when i saw that i was completely shocked because that was out of all the three collectives that i can that i've listened to consistently outside of like center circle perk mob and everybody else you guys were definitely the most consistent when it came to being on that playlist i think there was only outside of sudier with his collab tracks um there were maybe two or three purple posse songs one was, I think, a DJ Smokey collab and then a few more. But you guys are the most consistent when it came to that playlist, which actually I felt I felt was kind of interesting. Yeah, I don't I don't know if we would necessarily deserve more representation in the playlist than those guys. I mean, they were inspirations to us. So uh, I don't know if we can necessarily say that we deserve more of a spot. But uh, no. Yeah, like I said, I'll be interested to see who the curator kind of gravitates towards because i'm sure that there's going to be some gaps that people are not happy about they'll be like why aren't you featuring this person or like why don't you feature people from this collective type shit yeah so there's so many different there's so many different names because i literally just pulled up the actual playlist right now i was going to ask who do you want to actually see on the playlist like whenever they update it if it's a year from now or tomorrow <laughs> i'll be really interested to see if Cloudbug ever ends up on the playlist because he like recently just started putting some of his tunes on spotify and all that so like he really is like you got to be tapped into the soundcloud side of the scene to really like know about him or like youtube i guess yeah like i'll, I'll be interested to see if he ends up in the playlist because if if he does that'll mean that you know the person is like actually tapped into the the heart of the scene on soundcloud they should hire us <laughs> <laughs> yeah dude i'm t i'm saying like some of us need to do like a takeover or something yeah there's definitely a lot of different playlists especially just from people like funk smooths or just anybody that's sort of basically tapped in on instagram or youtube that are just trying to make their own playlist it's really cool um i would say my answer would have to be local stranger because of his most recent tape that's someone i hope that actually gets on the playlist even though he hasn't been producing as long as people are, that claim to be og or like OG funk, whatever the whatever that is. Yeah, if yeah, I'm yeah. being honest, um, just another subgenre, in my opinion. But no, like, yeah, Local Stranger is great. I uh, I had heard about him, but I don't think I had heard any of his music until recently. And like the guy is super talented. I definitely need to work with him very soon. Yeah, definitely. Favorite collab and how do I phrase this? Who's someone that you haven't worked with yet that you want to work with in the future? That's we we already said Local Stranger, but like outside of him, 
just pretend that he's not here right now. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay. So favorite collab. Do I have to be part of it, or is it just any collab? That's that's a that's a good question. Back to me. Okay, it could be a collab with you, and it could be somebody outside of of you basically so i don't have to be in it is that what you're saying yeah yeah you don't have to be in it <laughs> just to say it's shorter i need to make sure i get this right because if i don't i'll sound like a poser dude i'm telling you this right now i said jacob not jacoby for the longest time hey that's, found, a, that's okay when i when i found out <laughs> that it was jacoby i was like so i've been saying this shit for like two years wrong that's crazy <laughs> it's you got close you got close enough Okay, so my favorite collab, I think, is um, it's off of Purple Posse issue five. It's Mythic and Aseri holding a grudge. I've played, I've listened to that shit so many times. It's beautiful. Rest in peace, Mythic. R.I.P. Mythic, such a goat. And Aseri, too. I haven't heard from him in a while. Like, that's, yeah, that's I think a shocking he, name. I don't have any reason to believe he's not alive, but yeah, I miss Aseri's music. R.I.P. Aseri's SoundCloud. For, <laughs> for real. And question, uh, where is Loud Lord? That's the biggest lore of all time. Loud, Loud Lord is alive from what I've heard. Slight Beats has uh, tweeted about him semi recently, I think, because he like keeps in touch with him. I think I was actually I was gonna make a video about like where is Loud Lord, and so like I hit him up on Snapchat, I think, and because I didn't I didn't think he would be. Uh, it didn't seem like he was active on the other shit, so. I hit him up there and he was like, hey, like, thanks or whatever. And I was like, yeah, would you want to do an interview sometime? And never heard back. So I, I think he Jeez. wants to be left alone. So like respect. But yeah, I think he's I think he's alive and doing doing all right from all from what I can tell. Love from a distance. <laughs> right. Exactly. Do not hit up Loud Lord. <laughs> oh, and someone I'd like to collab with. I mean, obviously, DJ Smokey would, would be a fun collab. But I guess like outside of outside of all that i guess I, it would have to be like asap rocky or something you know like something crazy so so, so like a dream asap rocky. rocky collab yes that'd be awesome that would be i could honestly see anything happening because there's so much there's so much shit that's actually happened in the genre in general in the last year when it comes to like the live sets and just content in general i'm not shocked at anything happening at this point yeah i as long as everybody just keeps you know chugging along i think it's only a matter of time before the scene grows to the point where that's just like commonplace to see people making moves like that. Yeah, definitely. I would say the biggest leap was Sudi and Freddy Dread. Yeah, like, Freddy Freddy's come up is crazy. Like I I wanted to make a video about that for so long, and then when his album was about to come out, I was like, okay, this is the time. Yeah, I think that's the only. It's probably the only name names that I can think of when it came to like a producer and a rapper that are pretty niche in the genre in general even though he doesn't classify himself as a funk artist or funk producer or funk rapper in general probably what a lot of people might assume with the exception of maybe harper or anybody from devilish trio like 10 gauge or hydra those are probably the names off the top of my head that i can think of that come to my mind when it comes to being rappers and also being producers as well yeah yeah, no, definitely. I can think of another one, but I don't know if I don't know if they want it public that they are also a producer. I just won't mention it. I can I can definitely respect it. I can definitely respect it. I literally just lost it. So DJing. I saw the video. Opinions on that scene, basically. So what are what were your hiccups when it came to DJing and tips for anybody similar to like making content for anybody that watched that video? Anybody that didn't watch that video? yeah it's it's easier than you think that's that's what i would say it's really just about planning ahead and having a strategy for it and i guess the hardest part really is just like the like performing in front of people part that's the part that is always kind of tricky for me is like you just kind of have to ignore that <laughs> just like kind of do your thing and uh no it's it's way easier than you would expect i think it just takes a lot of practice mostly um to get comfortable with it mostly to get comfortable with the gear and stuff so that was the biggest hiccup for me is just like getting comfortable with the gear but i think especially after the tour over the summer i'm like in a much better spot because i've just had much more opportunity to play you know play live and stuff so i would just recommend that is interested in it to just go for it and like just visit your local venue or whatever and 
ask whoever you, you know try to try to make friends with the dj that you meet there or something you know like just try and like make something happen because if you want to help build out you know flesh out your local scene there are a few other places that you know have the blueprint for that and like can give you that knowledge so if anybody's trying to do that hit up funk around and find out because they know what they're doing and also infinite wave because they're doing shit down in dallas yeah shout out to them too yeah i was just reaching out to i was just reaching out to Corey, and i was like i could definitely help anybody out that was actually that's actually with you when it comes to media just nervous as shit when it comes to like if i ever if i ever spin um i would say i'll definitely do like a live stream before i even think about going on a stage sort of just getting that inspiration from back when and um yeah yeah just i love what he's been doing on youtube that's super dope yeah just him with the back with the back to backs i don't even know how long i know he's been producing and djing in general but just seeing him in person just being so comfortable on stage it's sort it's really eye-opening like just knowing that somebody has done this for so long and just seeing them in their own state of mind is sort of like a little more confident nervous as shit but i'm i'm a little more confident knowing that there's someone that is this comfortable that just flows yeah, yeah. back when has like a demeanor that i i like am so envious of he's just like so chill like it's not it's never a big deal like it doesn't matter how big the crowd is he's just he's just doing his thing so like mad respect to him i wish i could be on that level (laughs) man i don't just like like there's so there's so many things i I just want to say about him in general that i could basically like fit in this conversation in general but i would just say extremely underrated deserves more listeners Yep, I'd say so. And it's a matter of time because he, not only does he release great, great music that probably more than like 40,000 people listen. I, I don't even know how much I'm just estimating on Spotify right now. I don't even know the number at this point, but it needs to be like just add a, add a zero to that if I'm being honest. Yeah, whatever's it, whatever it's at, just add a zero or two. Just, just add a zero. He's just so, he's just uh, so consistent. He, yeah, he was like the first person I heard in the scene. Like... That's how I figured out, or that's how I heard about Purple Posse is because he, you know, was really starting to get that shit off the ground when I started following him. And so he was a huge inspiration for my music and then obviously a huge inspiration when it came to DJing too. So yeah, shout out to Backwin. Shout out to Backwin. He's the homie. God damn. God damn. That's right. He was the, he was the, probably the funniest dude on the vlog as well for the tour over the summer. Yeah. What was the... What was the initial thought for you guys like actually doing vlogs like during the tour because i know you guys he probably did maybe a few you also did a few um especially like when it started like mid mid tour and probably like one of the shows at the end and maybe compiled like a few of them on the road what was his thought but also what was your thought when it came to actually branding into a different aspect of content i would say music wise especially since it's on like your von storm channel and not your yokai channel yeah i think the reasoning behind it i think was to just like kind of spread awareness for the tour as it was going on so the idea was that like after each stop we would post a tour or a a tour vlog for that stop and so that was the thought is just to like keep getting the word out there and give people you know a chance to tune in if they might i mean even if they're able to make it to the show like being able to see the behind the scenes stuff and everything between the shows is i think kind of fun and even for me like this this is the first time i've gone on tour and like and it's also you know i haven't been djing for that long so it's something that i really wanted to just like document and be able to look back on and so um that was another reason i really wanted to do it so and then the reason i put it on the von storm channel is just because i feel like it's it's probably going to be more meaningful to see that type of like behind the scenes content if you're a fan of the music because you might not have had a chance to see a live or maybe you did see a live and you want to you know see you know the behind the scenes stuff and so i just felt like it made made more sense over there because it's also like vlogs are not really like the type of shit that i do on the yokai channel so i felt like it made more sense over there yeah definitely definitely I, I can actually i can actually agree with that like it does it does seem like it would definitely make a lot more sense i wish i wish i could say this right now but i don't I don't know like what's going to happen like the next year, but hopefully in the next year that both of us are at a better stance when it comes to like either content or music in general that shit, I honestly, like I'll pick up a camera and just go on tour with you guys. Like if you guys ever do it again, like I, I'm definitely, I'm definitely down to do it. 
and I can definitely pump out videos almost every single day. I don't I don't know if you've seen the shorts or not, like when it came to like YouTube or yeah. Instagram. Well, shit, man, keep going. I respect the grind. That's uh, daily uploads are not easy. I, I did it for a while and it it's a lot sometimes. So mad respect. De definitely. And I, I also do want to say that anybody can do it, but it just takes a lot of time. Like it takes a lot of fucking time. You gotta time. commit the time. Yep, that's for sure. Hey, I actually I gotta bounce for another call here soon. But I mean, if you got like a closing question that you want to do, that then we can do that as well. Yeah. So there was a fe there was a feature on Volume Ten, which it was someone outside of Holy Mob, which I think was Vero. Yep. So what can we expect from the next drop, whenever that may happen? I I would say that there there is definitely potential for somebody outside of mob to be on that project can you also give like an estimated time or is that or is that like foreign, well foreign, foreign, i know that knowledge? The, i know that the holy mob accounts on instagram and twitter have changed their profile picture definitely very recently very so recently. something <laughs> must be happening soon you gotta you gotta wonder they're brewing they're brewing things things are brewing that's right yeah man but i really appreciate you just hopping on call it's definitely like this is definitely a milestone because i know there's a lot of people that they probably haven't seen this format of video from me and they probably haven't seen you in this type of video before so this is definitely a first step i think the only person that has actually done this was probably teddy color and mm -hmm. yeah. it's, it's definitely like a big stepping stone for me because i've never done this format but i do also get huge inspiration from him as well yeah just, totally just to bounce off from him just shout out to him too but man i appreciate you from just getting this call um i know you're you got a busy ass schedule but i really appreciate you just being on the call for me just a dude that just makes funk videos for an hour and a half yeah of course man it's 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 been great i appreciate you having me on i i enjoy seeing your your content pop up in my feed and uh keep up the great work yeah man but um any okay last question because before before i before before you leave and everything because i know you, you're definitely probably busy who's somebody that you want to see on one of these type of videos mm, i think you should get back when on here next oh really <laughs> yeah i think he'd be down yeah, I could definitely. I'm gonna be nervous DMing him, <laughs> bro. I know he'd be down. He's 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 on his YouTube grind now. He's yeah, you know, he's he's looking to do some collab stuff. So I would uh I would hit him up. He's done some interviews before, so like yeah, he's probably used to that. He's yeah. probably getting hit up for interviews on the daily. It's cool as shit too. <laughs> like I'm gonna just keep saying that he Super is cool. Chill. He's a cool cat. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah, but nah, bro. I appreciate I appreciate you. Um, just shout out to everybody that not just the not just the collectives, but everybody that's actually done the live shows. Like, there's so many people that I'm just losing track of right now because there's so many names. I know I'm not the only person that's actually doing this type of stuff, and there's a lot more people that are definitely going to do more content in the future. But just get started. You can definitely test by both of us. Um, if that's any sort of inspiration, like the two people that started from nothing now we have something i guess <laughs> that's right that's right just gotta put in the put in the hours and closing closing sentences inspiration any shout outs any plugs anything before you leave man i would just say follow holy mob and stay tuned god bless that's all